Is it worth upgrading from an RTX 3070 to a 4070 Super? Given the immense popularity of the 3070, it's a question I see a lot. So in this video, we are going to find out. My name is Matt, I'm a former rocket scientist, and my goal is to help you make the right component choices and put them together the right way every single time. In the Is It Worth It series, we've been helping you make the right choice by showing you just how much you can expect to increase the performance of your system with a drop-in upgrade. In this video, our focus will be on the RTX 4070 Super to see if it's a worthwhile upgrade from an RTX 3070. One of the most popular GPUs according to Steam. In addition to showing you benchmarks across 17 games at three different resolutions, I am also going to take a brief look at the new Nvidia app and let you know if it's worth installing. And for those of you that plan to stick with your current graphics card, I will also show you how to lower your temps and increase performance by doing a repaste, something every PC gamer should know how to do. It's really not rocket science, so before we jump into the benchmarks, let's first take a look at the new Nvidia app. The Nvidia app was first released to public beta in February 2024. The app combines the Nvidia control panel and GeForce experience into a single interface and provides access to other NVIDIA apps and features. This is a very welcome improvement from the legacy software that NVIDIA offered and better positions them to compete with AMD's Adrenaline software. When the app was first released, the software didn't offer much other than a better interface, but new features have been added over time. So the question now is, should you install the current beta version or wait for the full release? Let's take a quick look to find out. Downloading the app is relatively easy, but I strongly encourage you to download it directly from NVIDIA to avoid the risk of malware. I installed version 10.0.1.256, which is the current beta version available at the time of filming this video. The app interface looks good and is really easy to use, which is a welcome improvement over the old control panel interface. There are options on the left to download, update your drivers, tweak your graphic settings, redeem gift cards, which are all features that existed in prior versions of Nvidia software. That said, there is one feature that was added recently under system that will finally allow you to overclock your GPU directly without the need to install third-party software, such as MSI Afterburner or ASUS GPU tweak. Under System, you will find a performance tab that shows statistics for your GPU and performance limit sliders for voltage, power, and temperature. In addition, you will see a new feature called Automatic Tuning, which, according to Nvidia, will find the best overclock settings for your specific GPU silicon and cooler. I'm really curious to see how well it works, so let's run it for my ASUS ROG Matrix Platinum RTX 4090 and find out. First, let's test the default GPU performance in 3 Mark Speedway, Port Royal, and Steel Nomad, three great GPU benchmarks. Then let's test the new one-click automatic GPU tuning option in the Nvidia app with the performance limits set at default values. I did try running the auto overclock with the performance limits increased, but the results were lower, which doesn't really make sense. Now this will take about 30 minutes to run, so make sure you're not in a rush. And finally, let's compare these results with the maximum manual stable overclock for the card. You can learn the step-by-step -step process I used to manually overclock this card in my GPU overclocking guide. As you can see from the results, the automatic overclock clock is extremely mild, with increases of only around 1-2%. to When you compare it to the maximum overclock, it becomes clear that it doesn't really do a good job of pushing the card to its limits, leaving anywhere from 3-5% to extra performance on the table, which is somewhat disappointing, but at least it's a step in the right direction. The new app looks great and has an easy to use interface. If that was all it offered, then I would say wait for the full version before installing it. However, with the inclusion of the one-click automatic tuning feature, Nvidia has now made it easy to overclock your GPU even if the results aren't spectacular. For most people, this increase in performance will not really be noticeable, but I'm not sure why anyone wouldn't want to use this feature, given that it will not damage your GPU or invalidate your warranty, according to Nvidia. Hopefully, they will continue to improve it and perhaps leverage AI to offer higher performing overclocking options in the future. They also added AV1 video encoding to this version, which greatly improves the clarity and quality of recordings when you use the app. Given these new features, I would highly encourage everyone to start using the new app. It should only get better as new features are added. As mentioned earlier, our focus for this video is on the RTX 4070 Super, one of the most popular current generation GPUs, to see if it's a worthwhile upgrade from an RTX 3070, one of the most popular prior generation GPUs. To better reflect the type of system that most RTX 3070 users have, I decided to use my DDR4-based Intel test bench with the following components. For the CPU, we have an Intel Core i9-12900KS. For the motherboard, we have an ASRock Z690 Extreme Wi-Fi 6E. For RAM, we have 32 2GB of G-Skill Trident Z Royal Elite DDR4-3600 at CL14. For the CPU cooler, we have a Deepcool LT720 360mm AIO. For storage, we have 2TB SK Hynix Platinum P41 NVMe Gen 4 M.2 SSD. And for the power supply, we have a Be Quiet Dark Power Pro 12 1200W 80 plus titanium power supply. Affiliate links for all of these components are listed in the description below. All testing was performed with the 
12900K is at the fault bias settings with XMP turned on. Both GPUs were tested at the fault settings without any overclock. I selected these settings to avoid any issue with silicon lottery. With the test system ready to go, let's check the benchmarks. As I mentioned earlier in the video, if you've owned your graphics card for a while and your temperatures are starting to increase, then it's a good idea to consider changing the thermal paste. The good news is it's super easy to do, but before you start pulling your card apart, make sure you benchmark it first with software like Firmark. This will help you detect issues that may arise as a result of the repaste process, such as not tightening down the screws properly. Once you are done recording your results, here is a simple repaste process you can follow. Okay, so we're gonna quickly change the thermal paste on this graphics card. I'm gonna show you how easy it is. This is the 3070 that I'm testing in this video. Obviously you need tools, wipes, alcohol. These are really good, these cotton buds for getting some of the thermal material off. I've got thermal paste, you know, I've got remover and I've got the purifier. So I'm gonna use some uh, Kingpin cooling thermal paste on it as well. So the first thing to do is to really take a look at the card and see what needs to be taken off. So I think the best thing to do is first of all, take a look at the connection. So there's a couple of connections here that are attached to the fans. So when you pull this off, obviously these uh, need to come out too. When you take these out, try and put them back in the same way you took them out. So keep them in the quad arrangement that they were, right? So now that we've pulled it apart, yeah, this does look very dry. Now we should be able to pull these out. There we go. And there we go. Okay. Let's try and maintain the thermal pads. Yeah, they are all pretty good. The thermal pads are great. So let's get that thermal paste off. I use these Noctua cleaning wipes. Be careful not to damage these thermal pads because you don't want to have to put those back on. I'm just going to reuse the ones that we have. There's nothing wrong with doing that. Let's get the actual GPU cleaned up. By the way, this is the GPU here and you can clean up these too. I'm going to clean around the sides with alcohol. One other thing I do is, this is gonna seem a little strange, but I use coffee filters. And the cool thing about coffee filters is they're lint free. So they don't leave little bits of material behind. Now this is just the, from ArctiClean, the thermal material remover, you can buy them as a kit.
Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the thermal surface purifier. A little bit of thermal paste around the edge, not a big deal. You're gonna get more there anyway. Thermal pads are still in place, GPU, all good. My method here is to do an X. Okay, that one's the end of that. So now when you put this back, the only trick is that you don't wanna put it on and move it around. So you wanna get it really well lined up first. So first thing, put these cables back in. Whatever cables you took out, put them back in. Otherwise your fans won't work and uh, you won't get any RGB, which of course is the most important thing in your system. This looks lined up. Make sure your thermal pads are centered and lined up. You just follow that pattern until you get it tight. So super simple, it's not rocket science, it's Lego. For the RTX 3070 that I use in this video, the change in temperatures before and after the repaste was relatively small. This is likely because the card was not heavily used. Your results will vary based on numerous factors, such as the age and usage of your card, but if you see an increase in temperatures after thermally saturating the card in Fermark, then you will need to check and make sure you reassemble the card correctly. By changing your GPU thermal solution every few years and removing dust buildup regularly, you will keep your system operating efficiently for many years to come. In this video, we tested one of the most popular current generation GPUs, the RTX 4070 Super, against its popular prior generation counterpart, the RTX 3070, to see if it's a worthwhile upgrade. As you can see from the results, it was, not surprisingly, a clean sweep for the 4070 Super with 17 wins across 17 gaming benchmarks. Given how decisive the average gaming performance boost was, it's easy to recommend the RTX 4070 Super based purely on performance, since the margins are in excess of 40% at all resolutions, which is significant. Unlike the RTX 3070 that struggles in most games at 4K resolution, the 4070 Super actually offers an enjoyable experience, even at ultra settings, which is really impressive. When we look at power efficiency, the 4070 Super shows the improvements that Nvidia was able to make with the Ada Lovelace architecture, with efficiency and gains of around 50% over Ampere. But the question remains, is it really worth upgrading to a 4070 Super from a 3070? In order to answer this question properly, we really need to look at cost. The 4070 Super currently retails for around 600 US dollars, whereas if you were to sell your RTX 3070 on eBay, you're only likely to cure around 250 US dollars after fees. So if you convert that difference into gaming efficiency or FPS per dollar, then the RTX 3070 still offers much better value at 1440p with an average FPS increase of over 50% when compared with the 4070 Super. You get much higher performance at lower power draws with 4070 Super, but it doesn't come for free with an average gain of approximately 0.12 frames per second per dollar at 1440p if you decide to upgrade. So the best answer to the question is it depends. The RTX 4070 Super is an excellent graphics card, arguably one of the best buys from the current generation. If you own an RTX 3070 and game at lower resolutions, then I would say no, it's not worth upgrading. However, if you game at 1440p or plan to start gaming at 4K, then I would say yes, it is worth it. Your gaming experience will be significantly better at higher resolutions, making the additional cost worthwhile. Another question you may be asking yourself is if you should wait for the 5070. Given that 5070 likely won't be released until early 2025, I would recommend trying to find a 4070 Super now at a good price while selling your existing 3070 for as much as possible. When the 5070 is finally released, your 3070 will likely suffer a large drop in value. So if you wait, you will be trading better performance against a much higher cost. You will also lose the ability to game at higher resolutions with newer features, such as DLSS 3, if you wait. And who knows what the performance and cost of next generation cards from Intel and AMD will be. They could very easily kill the value of older Nvidia cards like the 3070. So my recommendation is don't wait. You can always sell your 4070 in the future if you want to upgrade again. Remember, it's not rocket science, it's Lego. My goal is to help you make the right component choices and put them together the right way every single time. Thank you for watching this video in the Is It Worth It Upgrade series. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button and subscribe so you don't miss out on future episodes. Please also comment and offer suggestions on future upgrades that you would like me to look at. Bye for now.